Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's show, a Bali cherry. Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. I, in the sense that I have a branch that splits into two, shoots in here, so I'm probably gonna cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. So I just put them on the bottom, growing upwards into the we bay. We the trees and then we water as we need to. We try to get rid of those air pockets. So as with most species in the bonsai world, repotting is going to happen in the spring with the Bali cherry. Hopefully going to get some flowers uh, this year and uh, some cherries sometime. Don't think they'll happen this year. This is one of my discount finds from uh, last year at the nursery, the discount section. And we just kept it uh, nice and protected over the winter. And now it's time to uh, dig in here and, and see what we got. So I got my normal tools, but I also got some uh, bigger tools for the anticipated size of this guy. It's in a 10 gallon pot here from the nursery. And we gotta get it out of here and fit it in a pot. So far, so good. So no different from the other bonsai trees, just a bigger tree. We're gonna rake out the dirt, get all these roots into a radial pattern, flaring outwards. And then we'll, we got three pots to choose from today, and we'll see which one seems to fit this guy. It's a beautiful day in Minnesota. We're in the 50s. Got some plants out on the benches, trees out on the benches. I'll show you those in a moment. I want to remind you though too that uh, even in Minnesota with all these beautiful days we know we're probably going to hit freezing again. It's in the forecast for a couple more days where the low might be around freezing or just a little bit below. So any of my trees that have some early leafing going on which is only about three or four trees I will bring those inside my garage for those couple nights that it gets down to the freezing mark. So I got a lot of them on the benches. I get so excited this time of year. I got the pond flowing. Started that yesterday. So let me give you the tour of the backyard and some of the trees in their soon to be glory as I keep working through this dirt.
Hope you enjoyed the tour of the backyard. I can work back here now and hear the water running down the creek from one pond to the next. So back to the tree, I certainly lost a good chunk of the dirt. So we got some more to do. I don't want to get more than half of the root structure gone, I don't think. Um, in the care guide that I looked up for the Bali cherry, didn't give me that specific of directions for the repot. But always erring on the side of caution for that first repot and not bare and rooting the trees unless of course it's a maple of some sort. Our maples survive pretty well with bare rooting. But we'll leave some of the original soil. We got a lot left to cut out though. But one of the things I wanted to mention, it's a good idea to keep your bucket. So here is my 10 gallon bucket. And if you don't have one of these, use a five gallon bucket. But when I'm working outside on the ground and I don't have my workshop benches and stuff, when I go to lay this tree down on the ground, well, all my branches up top are susceptible to breaking. And you're rolling the tree around, going from side to side to side. And if you're not up high off the ground, your, your tree branches are gonna suffer and you're gonna have some damage. So keep this 10 gallon bucket from the nursery close by or keep a five gallon bucket that you have close by so you can do what I'm doing right now. And it's, the bucket's holding the tree because this is big and heavy. I just can't do it with my hand as I'm going through trying to get rid of some of this soil. So we're losing some of the major soil. Now there's some big roots in this guy. And as always, one of the exciting parts for me with every tree is figuring out what's gonna happen with this Nabari down here at the bottom. And I do notice I've got some, some rough bark right here that's peeling off. So there's some death right here. This bark's gonna probably fall off in the process of re-potting. So I'm gonna do my best to keep things intact as best I can. And we're gonna see uh, where this is going. But we've got a great big, great big root right here with this one coming over it. I may cut this one right off. Um, then there's a kind of a bulge here, but then this root going here, and then some, not as much in the back, but here's one right here that I think is dead. Nothing going on that one there. We're gonna probably cut that off. But so exciting to get into your tree that first time to see what it's uh, all about. And this tree has plenty of roots, plenty of fine roots feeding off of this main trunk. Um, and a lot of big roots too. We're just gonna have to make some cuts and see what pot it's gonna fit in and then go from there. I got some of my big, big soil for the bigger trees and for the bottom level for good drainage. And let's see where this guy's gonna go in here. So that's a pretty good look, but now I have roots that won't let me Go front to back. Okay, it's time to finish up this video. My apologies, I won't know until I hit the editing suite, but my GoPro seems to be having lots of issues lately. And uh, so I got my cell phone up there recording and the GoPro. So I got my medium mix of Akadama hummus and lava rock to fill up the rest of this pot. We gotta get some water on this guy. He's been out in the sun a little bit too long. Good thing it's not 80 degrees today, but it's in the 50s. I'm feeling awfully nice. All right, let's see what we got going here. Got some roots sticking straight up in the air. Those won't be long enough to survive. But we got lots of them down below. Can tuck some in as best I can. 
And again, I warned you that I would have a mound of uh, soil today. And the reason why is because the pot's probably just a little bit shy of being deep enough. So, again, we do what we can with what we have. Do our very best. So we're gonna get rid of some of those air pockets. There's a big one right down in there. There goes the soil. And as long as I keep this thing protected from the cold, we'll be sitting really pretty as we get into the spring here where the highs are gonna be in the 50s for the rest of the way here, give or take a few degrees. So I do have that one side over there that is a little bit concerning, but those roots will just die away on that top section and they'll just, uh, they'll grow from the bottom. I just cut a couple of those out of there. And these really top roots that we don't really need anyway. Just don't want to get rid of too many for fear of, you know, really hurting the tree. Keep it watered good. What I'll do next is put some sphagnum moss on top of here. That'll keep it moist as well and hold in some of that moisture for these uh, exposed roots. So I will, I will add some sphagnum moss on here as well. So a little bit more, there we go. Oh yeah, getting some of that soil down right down in there. lose some of that mounding up already. This side looks real good. I got this nice exposed root over here. You can see my wire on this, but I'm not too worried about that for this tree for right now. Cut a couple more little fledgling roots down here, poke a couple in, and again, we'll sphag the moss this. We'll sphag them moss this as soon as possible here. All right, let's get some water. Ah, some relief after all that work on this guy. Some relief. Not too bad, not too many exposed roots, just this one section over here. Again, sphagnum moss will hold in some of that moisture and protect those roots, and I'll do that. I gotta sift some of that up into smaller sizes and take care of that. Here's one, one juice bottle already consumed. This is a big pot, it's gonna hold a lot of water. Make sure it gets in all those cracks and crevices. And I'm starting to hear some dripping now. So let me use my. There we go. You know we're going through and through now when you got the dripping. I'm going to be very liberal with this because I want that water to be touching all of those roots that we just bothered. Make sure it's seeping through. And getting all the underneath parts. There we go. Two of them. Done. All right. So let me turn this around so you guys can get a glimpse of this. There we go. I'll come back here and take a peek with you. All right. So we do have more of a mounded, or a more of a tree slanting to the left than I even remember me putting it in there that way. That's why you gotta stop and look back at your tree and take a peek at that. But that's all right. We got a very unique looking cherry tree. And so I'll show you what I can already see. We got this motion over here. 
and we can change the angle future trees of course but I got this coming up here and then this could become the main branch here or this one back here so if I just cut this whole thing back right here this will become the main source of this tree and I've got these right here to contend with give us a cut right here there we go that big one has been taken care of and we'll just let this get old I'm sure we'll get some growth from here All right, so for right now, we'll just have to let it go like that. So you can't see these top branches with the phone video, but there we have our Bali cherry. Our Bali cherry slanting to the left, and uh, we're gonna see what that thing does this year. I'm going to put it in a better spot for a final pose for you guys. And hey, thanks for watching. For Dave's Bonsai, this is Dave Weiss. Glad you could uh, take a peek at my garden today and watch me transplant the Bali cherry. And of course, I'll give you updates along the way. Keep safe, everybody. Hope you're all doing well, and we'll catch you on the next one. gonna cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. So I just put them on the bottom, growing upwards into the so bag. We fill up with trees and then we water as we need to. We'll try and get rid of those air pockets.